How's it going everyone? Want to talk a bunch of PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 game updates in this video. Final Fantasy 16 gets a bit of an update. Armored Core 6, I feel like I haven't talked about this game as much as I should, especially given that I feel like I ramble about how much I want a big budget mech game in every video, or a lot of videos at least, so want to talk a little bit about that. One Piece Odyssey, while I'm not a big One Piece fan, is a game I have been following and I want to talk a little bit about that and a bit of an update on Like a Dragon Ishin at the end of this video, as GameStop will have an exclusive steelbook for that game if you're interested in picking that game up physically. Alright, first of all, Final Fantasy 16 gets a bit of an update. As noted on Tweaktown, during a recent Final Fantasy 14 livestream, Yoshi P had some interesting things to say about the development of Final Fantasy 16 and how it'll look and play on the PlayStation 5. Final Fantasy 16 is noted to be a testament to the PlayStation 5's enthusiast grade performance, noting it's all real time rendering, no loading, it's become a game that looks at the power of the PlayStation 5. I've been interested to hear more about the performance and the visual specifications of Final Fantasy 16 because what you see as far as gameplay has looked mighty impressive. Like, this game is a visual delight to say the least, and at this point, I don't even care that much about pushing visuals that hard. Like, I feel like games have looked good on the PlayStation 4. Yes, they've gotten a visual bump on the PlayStation 5. You look at a game like Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, I feel like that's kind of the standard bearer. And Demon's Souls Remake, those are the standard bearers as far as PS5 titles go. Even like Horizon Forbidden West and God of War Ragnarok, those also look really good on the PS5, even though they're cross-gen titles. But, you know, these games, I feel like... We're getting to the height of visuals. I really need games to have quality performance, and that's why I was upset with a game like Gotham Knights only running at 30 frames per second. I know Plague Tale Requiem had the same thing. Like, dock down the visuals if need be, or give me the options to play the games at 60 frames per second, because yes, I get it to a lot of people, and especially promoting a game, having the best visuals possible is definitely going to be something that's easier to market than performance. A lot of people I talk to don't even know the difference between 30 and 60 frames per second. I had friends pick up God of War Ragnarok, and they didn't even tinker with the visual settings. They just booted up the game, and they played the whole game through at 30 frames per second, until except for one of my friends who I was talking to him about the game, and I was like, yo, what uh, graphic setting are you playing the game at? And he's just like, I don't know, I just booted up the game, and then I told him, yeah, there's uh, there's different options, and then he changed it to performance mode, and he's like, holy hell, it's totally different, but that's what I'm saying, like, a lot of people, like, I care a lot about 60 frames per second, I feel like games across the board on the PS5 should at least give you the option of playing a game at 60 FPS, I'll play it freaking 1080p, just give me 60 frames per second, I'd much prefer that. And, uh, you know, I want that to be a regular thing. Again, Final Fantasy 16, definitely a visual delight based on the, you know, gameplay we've seen thus far. But that, that wanes on me after a while. Like, I, that gets old to me. Sure, it looks great. I can appreciate it. But I need that 60 frames per second because ultimately that'll legitimately affect my enjoyment of the game the entirety of the way through. Great visuals. It's great to look at. I can appreciate it. But ultimately, it's just like, you know, the visuals are good. For me, the performance literally affects the gameplay, and the gameplay is of utmost importance. Don't get it twisted, you need visuals at a certain level, I just feel like every game is hitting that certain level, and we're just pushing it farther and farther and farther, and sure, games are looking great, it's just, it does very little for me these days, and what I need is quality performance. I don't need anything above 60 FPS, but 60 FPS consistently on the PS5, I don't feel like that's too tall of an ask. And that's personally what I prefer. If you prefer having the best visuals possible, 4K, ray tracing, etc, etc, and you're totally cool with playing 30 uh, at 30 frames per second, more power to you, but at least give consumers the option to play in either settings. But in the case of Final Fantasy 16, we're gonna, and in 2023 in general, we're gonna really start seeing these next generation titles being utilized, or utilizing the consoles as well. Like Starfield, next generation game on the Xbox side of things. Final Fantasy 16, next generation game. Spider-Man 2, next generation only game. And now we can really see, you know, how these developers are gonna utilize the entirety of the PS5 and not worrying about the PlayStation 4. And we saw a little bit of that with Ratchet and Clank. I feel like Ratchet and Clank is one of the best looking games that we've seen ever 
before. And, um, you know, not everybody's big on Ratchet and Clank. I love Ratchet and Clank, but, uh, yeah, we need more games like that. And I feel like in 2022, kind of barren for games at that level. You got a lot of cross-gen stuff. I mean, the biggest exclusives of the year. You look at it from a PlayStation standpoint. Horizon, cross-generational. Uh, Gran Turismo, cross-generation. God of War, cross-generation, and now I feel like as we head into 2023, we're finally pushing that to the wayside, and I get it, there's a lot of people that are like, no, we want Final Fantasy 16 on PS4, I've seen a lot of we want Spider-Man 2 on PS4, look, you gotta find out a way to get a PS5 at this point. You can find one. It is not that difficult anymore. My boy wanted a PS5. We spent like five minutes and we got him a PS5. Yes, sometimes it's a little bit more than you just walking into a store and picking it up. But nonetheless, uh, it's not as difficult as it was, let's say, in early 2021, late 2021. Uh, not at all um, at this stage of the game. And don't get price gouged on eBay either. That, that ain't the move. All right, moving on from that. Armored Core 6 was announced a while ago, and I feel like I should be talking a lot more about this game. Some stuff was going on, and I didn't get a chance to really cover this game, but yes, I am incredibly excited that Armored Core is back. We're getting a big budget mech title, and now From Software is really recognized as one of the top studios in all of gaming, because you have to remember when the last Armored Core came out, when was the last Armored Core release? I guess it would be Armored Core Verdict Day? Was that the last? one I feel like from software had not gotten the recognition that they do now verdict day came out in 2013 so that was after what dark souls yeah dark souls won but now like from software is like very very well known where verdict day um you know they weren't that well known and I think with armored core 6 a lot of people are just gonna take recognition to it not only because for me you know big budget mecha title that already has me all on board but it's a game done by from software who again these days are very well well known in the entirety of gaming. In an IGN interview that covered a lot in regards to Armored Core, Masaru Yamamura was asked if the game would feature multiplayer or cooperative elements, noting we are thinking mainly of competitive multiplayer. As in past titles in the series, players will be able to show off their own aircraft and have fun competing against each other. On the other hand, in the story mode, which is the main part of the game, we have chosen not to include cooperative play because we want to emphasize the dynamic action, the free running of your aircraft, and the active changes you can make during missions. We are focusing on the intense experience that can only be realize in single player mode. F I'm perfectly cool with that. A totally single player armored core that you can totally focus on that and not worry about cooperative play for potentially hindering performance. I don't know. Uh, I am totally on board with that. Now, this is a game that's cross-gen, so, you know, we're not entirely out of the woods as far as, you know, PS4 and Xbox One titles. Armored Core 6 is a cross-gen game, um, so it'll be interesting to see the reception of that. Um, I, I think the game, from a visual standpoint, will look good, and I, again, I'm just excited that we're finally getting a big budget mecha game. We get, you know, Gundam battle operation and whatnot, but that's not the type of game I want. Armored Core 6 that is the big budget mecha game that I want. An action heavy mecha title. Oh, count me in. I am so on board with that and hoping it turns out well and that'll pave the way for Armored Core to get consistent releases because when you look at Armored Core Verdict Day, legitimately that game was a decade ago. Um, so yeah, it took, a, it took a while for us to get a new Armored Core, but at least it's finally happening. And I do believe Verdict Day was the last one. Armored Core 5, I think, was 2012. Um... I vividly remember playing Armored Core 4 Answer. I remember seeing the box art of that game, and I was like, whoa, I gotta play this game. But yeah, that was a way, way long ago. I think that was 09. Nonetheless, Armored Core has been absent for quite, quite some time, and it's nice to finally get a new one. All right, moving on from that, do want to know, One Piece Odyssey has gotten a brand new trailer in the systems trailer, an 11-minute breakdown of the gameplay of the title, showcasing a lot of stuff. Now, this actually... Outside of the One Piece label to it, it does look like a competent and well-made RPG. It's a modern take on the classic JRPG with a One Piece twist. Dive into the various systems that come together to make One Piece Odyssey an unforgettable experience for all comers from JRPG and One Piece veterans to newcomers to the beloved series. Master the strengths of each Straw Hat member in battles that never play out the same way. Scramble areas add a new dimension to combat while dramatic scenes spice up encounters while with unexpected events. Field actions give every Straw Hat a role while 
while exploring cut through iron bars with Zoro or build bridges with Frankie, craft combat items like Usopp's trick ball or buff parties with Asanji's delicious dishes to gain an edge in tough encounters and power up your characters the way you want to throughout the game. One Piece Odyssey is scheduled for release January 13th and there will be a demo released, a free demo everybody can check out on January the 10th. Whenever I talk about One Piece Odyssey, I gotta make it known, not a big One Piece guy, but uh, recently, I did try to get into it. I watched, like, a couple episodes, and then I just, like, kind of fell off. Like, I was just like, bro, this, this, this thing's, like... Too many episodes. Like, I can't I can't sit down and watch this many episodes when I got this kind of gaming backlog. You know what? Give me Jujutsu Kaisen at 24 episodes. That's perfectly fine. I can do that. One Piece cannot do that right now. Maybe someday. But nonetheless, this is a game I'm gonna check out. And maybe this will be what gets me to give One Piece a shot. Because it looks like this is gonna be something that will be accessible to non-One Piece fans. You know, it's not gonna be a game that I can give a good review on. Just because as a non-One Piece fan, I feel like this isn't my place to review this game. I'll give my thoughts on it as a non-One Piece fan, but most people that I think are going to play this game are going to be those that are big One Piece fans. Whenever an anime takes an RPG approach, though, I'm always interested to see how that turns out. Like, DBZ Kakarot took an RPG approach with an open world. I thought that turned out really well. I'm a Dragon Ball fan, not like the biggest Dragon Ball fan in the world, but I like Dragon Ball. So maybe that, you know, contributed to my enjoyment of the game. But let's see what One Piece offers again. January 13th for the release of that. January 10th for the demo. Lastly, I do want to note, February, one of the most loaded months of gaming in a long time. Probably since February of this year, to be perfectly honest. Um, but Like a Dragon Ishin is probably going to be a game that's going to get lost in the shuffle a little bit. But super excited for that. RGG just bringing out banger after banger. One of the most consistent gaming studios on the planet. And there was a GameStop exclusive steelbook that's been revealed uh, courtesy of Noisy Pixel that put out the images for this. Steelbook looks pretty cool, man. I mean, this is a well-done steelbook, and it looks like a lot of games these days getting steelbooks uh, via you know, different uh, retailers. Best Buy have been getting a lot of Square Enix ones with Octopath Traveler, Final Fantasy 16, Crisis Core, and these these steelbooks do appreciate in value. I mentioned it in a previous video, but the Crisis Core steelbook's going for like $50, and it was literally a pre-order bonus at Best Buy. So I don't know if this is going to get to that level. Probably not. Like, Crisis Core, kind of its own beast when you talk about the Final Fantasy 7 fandom, but Nonetheless, a pretty cool steelbook. Wanted to make note of that. Again, that is due out in February, on February 21st to be exact. Uh, that will obviously be a cross-gen game. PS4, PS5, X1, Series, PC... February 21st. And that is going to do it for me again. Final Fantasy 16 looking to be a game that showcases the power of the PlayStation 5. Expect to see a lot of games uh, like that in 2023 as we are somewhat moving on from the PS4 era. Kind of the end of an era as far as that's concerned. Armored Core 6, that's coming in 2023. And uh, yeah, it's not totally the end of an era because that will be a cross-gen game, but it won't feature co-op campaign. And uh, it looks like they're really focusing on the single-player aspect of that game. Very excited for that. One Piece Odyssey, gets a systems a trailer an 11 minute breakdown of a different gameplay aspects again as a non one piece fan gonna be interesting for my take on the game but don't expect like a review or real uh in-depth breakdown on the game because again i just don't think i can be the authority on a one piece game and like a dragon machine gets a gamestop exclusive steelbook that's gonna do it for me sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below thank you for watching and goodbye Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.